for the free response source portion here, okay, part A, it says we have a potassium sorbate uh, is commonly added to a diet soft drink as a preservative. The stock solution of potassium sorbate of known concentration must be prepared. A student titrates 45 milliliters of the stock solution with 1.25 molar HCl using both an indicator and a pH meter. The value of Ka for sorbic acid is uh, 1.7 times 10 to minus 5. So write the net ionic equation for the reaction between potassium sorbate, which is the conjugate base of the weak acid, so potassium sorbate and HCl. Well, the net ionic equation, okay, we know that this is going to break up. We're going to get K plus and uh, sorbate ion, and this is going to break up. It's a strong acid, H plus and Cl minus. So, you know, we're not going to care about the K. We're not going to care about the um, Cl. So we have these two ions together, and they're just going to turn into the acid. That's the first point. Okay, second one, it says uh, total... Uh, 29.95 milliliters of 1.25 molar HCl is required to reach the equivalence point. Calculate the potassium sorbate concentration in the stock solution. So we were starting here with a uh, uh, 45 milliliter sample of the stock solution. So we're going to say, okay, 25 milliliters, 29.95 milliliters of our solution. Okay, change it to liters, use the molarity of the HCl. Now we have moles of HCl. Uh, we can tell that since there's one H that goes on to this, uh, you know, um, sorbate, okay, one H is there, then it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and then that'll give us the moles of the potassium, um, potassium sorbate. Now the concentration then is just that number of moles, so we'll bring that down, divide by the volume, 45 milliliters, which is 0 0.045 liters, and we get 0 0.08319, which I rounded off to 0 0.0832 molar. So that's part B. Okay, C, the pH at the equivalence point of the titration is 2.54. They decide it's 2.54 at the equivalence point. So which of the following indicators would be the best? Well, we want an indicator that changes color then somewhere around 2.54. So the pKa tells us the pH at which each of these indicators changes color. So phenylphthalein changes way up at 9, and bromthymol blue at 7, methyl red at 5, thymol blue somewhere around 2, and methyl violet way at 0.8. We need something around 2.54, so the best one would be thymol blue. And it doesn't have to be exact, because we've seen every time we get uh, some kind of a... Um, uh, endpoint, you know, the equivalence point, the pH does change several points all at once. So, so 2.2.0 2 is close enough. So thymol blue, because thymol blue will change color closest to the uh, um, pH of our equivalence point. Okay, calculate the pH at the half equivalence point. Well, that's the easy one. So half equivalence point, remember that's the place where the um, pH equals the pKa. So pH equals the pKa, and so we know the Ka was given in the beginning of the problem as 1.7 times 10 to minus, 7, minus 5. That's for uh, the so, uh, sorbic acid. So the negative log of that is 4.77. Now, if you think about it and say, well, what we're really doing is we are taking a base. We're starting with the base, the sorbate ion, and we are adding acid to it. Okay, and so, you know, halfway, I'm really talking about a base. So in a base solution, the pOH equals the pKb, but it turns out this is going to be exactly the same. And uh, if I take my pKb, so I can calculate my Kb by taking Kw divided by Ka, and take the negative log of that number, I get 9.23, subtract from 14, and I also get 4.77. Now, that actually makes sense because I'm starting with my sorbate ion, and I'm adding acid to it, H HCl, and I'm getting my uh, sorbic, uh, whatever acid, sorbic acid. And when these two are equal, that's the same thing as if I started with my acid, and change it into the conjugate base, you know, when those two are equal, the pH equals the pKa. So it doesn't matter which direction I'm going, it's still the same situation, pH equals pKa. Now we're going to plot these points. So it says uh, the initial pH, so that was given, and the uh, 
the pH at the equivalence point and that was given. So those are plotted on this graph. So this is a sketch the titration curve. So we got to plot our point, okay, and it says mark it with an X. So I'll put a little X here. Okay, so that's the point. That was the 4.77. That's when the pH equals the pKa. And then to sketch it, then I say, okay, at this point, I do know that this is fairly flattening out. That's my buffer region. And at the equivalence point, I know that this should be pretty much, you know, straight up and down. And so I start at my, my beginning point. Then I just kind of connect these lines. And then I am titrating with a 0.125 molar HCl solution, which is going to be pretty close to pH of 1. So I'm going to have this, you know, sort of a, be asymptotic at about a pH of 1, a little bit higher than 1. And that's my curve. And that's the whole FRQ. No, it's not. There's one more piece. Now, the pH of the soft drink, it turns out to be 3.37 after the addition of the uh, um, potassium sorbate. So which species, the uh, sorbic acid or the sorbate, has a higher concentration? Now, to do this, we're going to say, well, here's 3.37. We have to compare to the 4.77. 4.77 was the halfway point right here, where with that point, we know that the two species are equal to each other. You know, that's where uh, the sorbic acid and the sorbate are equal. Here at 3.37, and we say, well, that's that's more acidic. It's more acidic, so therefore I must have more of my acid. So which species has a higher concentration? The sorbic acid, because the 3.37 is more acidic than the 4.77. Okay, and so again, we are comparing this number to the pKa, the 4.77. That's the FRQ.